In our first tutorial, we learned how to use a random number to make two spheres race each other across the screen from point A to point B. We then took things a stage further and used a range mapper's spline in order to create an ease in, ease out curve to make things a little less linear. In this tutorial, we're going to take things further still and vary the speeds at which the two spheres race each other so that they can appear to overtake and then catch up with each other as they cross the screen from points A to point B. Okay, so to set that in motion, the first thing we need to do is add a couple of points to the spline of our range mapper. So we've put those in there. So we've now got point one, two, three, and four. It doesn't matter where points two and three are at the moment because we're going to be controlling these at random by using our expression. So what we're about here is trying to create a window where these points can be moved around. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to allow point two here to be moved along its x-axis or anywhere, with, anywhere within a window along its x-axis of point two and point four. So it will, it will be restricted to this length here. In the y-axis, I'm restricting it between point one and point five. So it will have a small window that it'll be around, allowed to move around in. Similarly, with point three, I'm going to restrict this to between point six and point eight along the x and between point five and point nine along the y. So it will have a window up here somewhere that it can move around in. So that's what we're about here. And in doing so, what we're going to do is allow the spline to change shape so that the spheres will be able to speed up and slow down as they race each other across the screen. That's our objective. So let's get on with it and see if we can take it a bit further. Next thing to do, select our green sphere and add another Espresso tag. And in here, the first thing we're going to need is a time node. We don't want to work with time, we want to work with frames. So we'll put a frame there, take away the time port. Following on from here, we need four random nodes. As before, I'm going to set them up at first over here. So I want positive values only, and I'm going to use free, node, um, free mode again. So I'll set that up there. Next thing I'm going to do is set a real value in here. Uh, what I'm going to do first, I'm going to put an integer in there as well, and I'm going to illustrate the difference between the two. Get a couple of result nodes. So I'll get one there, and then command drag to copy it. And I'll plug in the integer in the bottom one and the real in the top one. So you can see there's quite a difference between the real and the integer values. The integer generates quite a large whole number, and that was fine for the, the last uh, equation that we put together, the last expression, I should say, that we put together. That worked fine. In this instance, though, I only want a real value to be in there for the simple reason that it's a much smaller number. What I need in this instance is going to be a number between 0 and 1, so I need to use a real value. I'm not going to be using the random integer node here either. I'm going to be plugging this straight into a range mapper. So that's why I'm using a real value. So we'll take these results away. Now, the next port of call gets this sorted out, take away the integer get it back to a reasonable size and then copy it, copy again and again. And now I'm going to set my uh, random seed values because I don't want them all 4, 7, 11. So let's go 7, 8, 3. They're just, as, as before, just random numbers that I'm keying in here, for four digit random numbers. It doesn't matter what they are as long as they're not all the same. That's fine. So following on from here, we'll get a compare node. Place that in there, plumb the frame into there. And we'll make the function greater than, that's fine. We can use greater than or equals to, but greater than is just as good. Um, so we'll compare to greater than one because we're only interested in generating a random number at frame one. And then the next thing we need to do 
is get four range mappers. And bring those in. Place them under there. Okay. And now you can see why we want the real value between 0 and 1, because as, as we said before, range mappers start with an initial value of 0 in the input lower and 1 in the input upper. So that's going to work fine for us. Plug all those into there. Following on from here, we need four freeze nodes. So we'll generate those. And plug our switch or our, our output from the compare into the switches of the freeze nodes to make sure that we only get a random number generated for the first frame. And then we can plug our range mappers into the values. And that completes that part of this expression. The only stage remaining is to go back to our previous expression and drag in the range mapper, or rather the range mapper's operator icon, which I'm going to discuss in the moment, because what we're going to do now is exactly what I said we would do at the end of tutorial one. We're going to do some advanced work with the range mapper. So before we go any further, I'm just going to padlock this parameter area here so that it doesn't change when I go back to my previous expression. So I'm going to go back to there. Don't need that. And I'm going to drag in what I mentioned before was the operator icon, which is this here. Now this little picture here is quite powerful. If we drag it in, we get something that resembles a range mapper node, but it doesn't have any input or output stages at the moment. But if we click on the square here, we come down to parameters and we can drop down into the submenu here to spline. Now this gives us access to the spline points that we've got down here. And we're interested in working with spline point two, X and Y axes, and spline point three, X and Y axes. So we're gonna bring those in now. That's the Y. And then we need spline point three x, spline point three y. I also want to work with the tension of the spline. Okay, so I'll just bring that to a good size so that we can see everything. So now we have those advanced parameters open to us and we can use the range mappers and the random numbers to control the positions of our spline points. So that's going to work very nicely for us. The tension, I'm going to bring a constant node in. And I'm going to set it to a, uh, a value of 0.4. I'm just going to take the padlock off here. What I'll do first, though, I'll bring that into a separate window. And just scroll down so that we can see it. And I'll take the padlock off. And now I've got my constant. What I'm going to do, I'll set that to 0.4, because I found that this worked quite nicely with the spline. And then I'm going to plug that into the spline tension. And you can see that the spline shape has already changed as the tension has changed. Has, has changed. So that's done. The next thing I'm going to do is connect these up. And you can see the spline is changing shape as I do so. The one thing that it's done that isn't correct, and I don't quite know why this is happening, this is spline point four. Now, we're not working with spline point four, and yet it still moves, and I'm not sure why that is, because I've got nothing telling it to do so. When that happens, the best thing to do is grab a hold of it, put it back over there, and you can see, because we're in free mode, the spline changes every time I touch anything. Okay, so now I've got my spline set up, and you can see that it changes shape quite beautifully, and this will allow the green sphere to move across the screen and change speed as it does so, thereby allowing it to race the pink one more convincingly. So you can see it starts very, very quickly and it slows right down at the end. Now it's doing something slightly differently again. And again, something slightly differently again. It's going backwards, which we don't really want. That's something we need to correct. So what we need to do go into our range mapper here and we need to set these up because we haven't put the values in them yet 
We've only got 0 and 1. So what we need to do to get this under control is set these values up correctly. So in the first range mapper, I wanted a range between 0 0.2, not 0 0.4, 0 0.2, and 0.4. That was the x-axis, the x-axis of 0.2. I said the y, I wanted to be 0.1 to 0.5. So we'll set that up there. And then for 0.3, I wanted a range of 0.6 to 0.8 and 0.5 to 0.9 in the Y. So that's changed the values there. It should bring this under control now. And that's much, much more like it. So that's quite nice. We're getting a variance in the curve, but it's not unruly like it was before. It's doing about what we want it to do. We're speeding up, we're slowing down, we're speeding up. It's perfectly good. That's great. So that's the setup for our green sphere. We now need to do the same for the pink. So the first port, port of call is to go into the, the expression for the pink here, get the range mapper and straight away at a couple of points. So we've got those done. Next thing to do is copy this expression from the green one onto the pink. So I'll command drag that down there. And then as before, go back into the other expression, click on the range mapper, padlock the parameters so they don't change. Go back into our other expression, don't need that window. And then what I need to do is drag the pinks range mappers operator icon into here. And that's done that little bit there. So now I'm hoping, all things being fair, that we will get a similar result for both spheres. We do. It's still got that slight problem with 0.4 being moved. We don't want 0.4 moved, we want it up there. I don't quite understand why that happens, it's very odd. It moves 0.4 and it shouldn't do. Anyway, we can easily sort it out by hand as we've done there. Now let's just try this. And as we can see, we're getting a similar result with the pink one now. And they're racing each other across the screen and changing speeds as they do so. Now their movements are quite quirky and that's fine because we've got to remember that they're snakes. So they probably would behave like this. They would sort of you know, shoot across the screen quite quickly at certain points and then slow down maybe to almost a standstill. So that's quite nice, the way they're moving. Um, you know, if they were cars, we'd want something slightly different, obviously. But, uh, you know, well, slightly different, probably quite a lot different, actually. Um, but uh, but as it is, they, they're, they're fine for snakes. So that's great. The only other thing you might like to do, if needs be, is go into the random seeds and change the values for the pinks um, random seed value there so that the pink and the green have got different ones to so just make it a little bit more quirky and a little bit more random between the two of them um, but that's the only thing you really need to change the range mappers for the pink can stay exactly the same they can both have the same window of opportunity per point um, and other than that leave the tension exactly the same on, on the, uh, the spline tension there and that's about it uh, that pretty much completes tutorial number two. So in tutorial number three, our plan of action will be to decide who has come first and who has come second out of the two spheres and display that result. And I'll see you there very shortly.